Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Conversations Around the Fire on Spirit Reflections. My name is Fred Govea. Spirit Reflections is an ongoing conversations of bilingual conversations in English and Portuguese about people's personal and spiritual journeys, the tools that they found along the way, and how these tools shaped who they are and the work that they do today. We interview artists, philosophers, scientists, and religious people of all backgrounds about what they discover along their path and how the work that they do today has become a tool for themselves and other people's spiritual growth. And if this is your first time here, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're also on Spotify, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you'd like to suggest a future guest for our show or a future topic, go on to our website, spiritreflections.org, and join our mailing list, and we can you can find out about all the upcoming shows and events that we have. Now I'm going to introduce you to our guest today, who is, who's going to be talking about hypno-constellations, Ili Adato. Ili is an innovator in the constellations field, having researched and developed several new techniques for applying systemic constellations, including hypno-constellations and distant healing constellations. These methods offer simple ways to harness resources which are often unseen and support personal strength, resilience, and growth. He's a personal and group facilitator of Systemic Constellation, and as the founder and managing director of the London School of Systemic and Family Constellation, he teaches the method to students from all over the globe. And there is more information in the description about Ely's website and social media handles for you to get more information and sign up to a course. Now, without further ado, before we talk about Hypno Constellations, let's learn about Ili's personal journey first. And with that, we welcome Ili to the show. Ili, welcome. Thank you, Fred. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for being with us. So tell us all about your journey on, and how you got to Constellations today. My journey. Oh, my journey started a long time ago. Yeah. So, as a child, really, as a teenager, you know, my interest in, in spiritual matters and my own spiritual quest uh, wasn't always supported and not, not always uh, found uh, the right kind of partners or people to be part of the journey or to learn from. So it's, you know, it's been a, a quest to find the, the right people to resonate with and later on in life teachers to follow. And I think, you know, my journey started, I'd say, when I was about 16. Um, but it is only when I found the constellations and systemic work that it brought everything home. I managed to find a, a common ground to all the things and all the practices and all the various ways of working with the non-physical that I have ever come across. It, it gave me a home to uh, to work, to develop, to evolve with what I brought with me and all the new things I'm learning on the journey. As, Got uh, it. And yeah. when you say it started at 16, Ili, in what way did it start? What was, what was the trigger that allowed you to start asking these bigger questions? How did that start? Well, it was in a youth movement. I actually stumbled across it quite by quite by chance. I listened to a, a, a lecture about Kabbalah, about the Jewish Kabbalah. Kabbalah. And um, I just remember the first experience of just becoming aware of a greater reality and uh, a, a lot of the unseen forces that plays up and some of the mysteries and the numbers and the letters and uh, it, it suddenly offered answers to questions I didn't even know I have but certainly they resonated with me and offered me something in the way of supporting me in, in knowing that there's not anything wrong with me and that it's not that I'm looking for things that has no uh, meaning or, or value but right. uh, suddenly I realized that um, there is a bigger picture and what we see you know with the eyes and what we can sense with our senses uh, doesn't offer us everything and logic is not uh, doesn't have the answer to everything there you go and, it's funny uh, that you mentioned I, I, that. Started, I started looking beyond, but that was that moment, the meeting with the Kabbalistic principles and, uh, and the principles of 
of looking beyond matter that started my journey. So it's funny that you mentioned that you had answers to questions you, need, you didn't even know you had those questions. And it's how it seems to just fit so logically when our spirit comes across a spiritual truth out there. And it's funny how when we are seeking the path, sometimes we can be so anxious. The angst of getting the answers and we sometimes suffer through it. And it's very refreshing to hear when somebody just simply stumbles across something and it just goes, oh, this just sits very well. Okay, I'll, I'll absorb that and I'll go along with it and keep keep opening up to other things, right? Yeah. Well, from, from my adult's perspective, from my more, more mature point of view, I understand that what I felt and what I experienced back in the age of 16 was a recognition. It wasn't something that I, you know, it wasn't something that was completely new to me. Right. It's something that I that I resonated with and I felt attracted to because of probably my soul's journey and what I bring right. with me, what I bring with me for my previous experiences around, you know, as as human, right on our planet. So exactly. uh, of course it shifts and it changes as as we shift and as we change and as we evolve. We look at ourselves and our place in the universe, professionally, spiritually, energetically, practically. Uh, in a very, very different way. So, and that's the kind of journey I'm taking my clients and my students through, which is, you know, an interesting because on the one hand, it's I'm teaching a method. And on the other hand, what this method offers is a support for one's own spiritual awakening. Right. Absolutely. So from the Kabbalah discoveries at 16, how do you get to constellations? Oh, there's, there's been a long journey in between. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's it's uh in in a in a nutshell uh so that started at 16 started a, a spiritual quest, spiritual awakening process and I was very very fortunate to end up in a high school which was um based on the British system of um something called Summerhill. It's, a, it's an open school system. It's like a liberal um, autonomous school that gives the pupils, the students uh, ability to choose. So I learned about responsibility and choosing and making, uh, take, basically creating my own timetable. And that great. school offered a, a great deal of spiritual subjects as part of the curriculum. So I was That's super, phenomenal. super uh, lucky. And I uh, had a chance to practice with uh, one of uh, Moreno's students arriving from the U.S., uh, teaching us, you know, me at 16, 17, learning psychodrama, uh, wow. which is one of the, one of the um, uh, sources that Bert Hellinger used for creating uh, systemic and family constellations work. So that was a big thing. I learned, studied more Kabbalah in, in, the, in the high school. Um, many, many other things that uh, stayed with me for, for many years thereafter. I'm curious, Illy, this Summer Hill method, was it developed in England? There is a school called Summer Hill in Britain. Okay. In England. And uh, they were pioneers uh, back in the early 60s, I think they started. And they gave students uh, freedom, freedom to choose, freedom to create their own timetable and to choose whether they... Uh, attend school or not, uh, choose one um, subject over the other. So there was a, there was a very open framework for, for decision making, for choices and stepping into the place of an adult uh, at the wow. time where this kind of support and openness really, really support. I Absolutely. It, it sounds a little bit like Waldorf schools uh, that Rudolf Steiner implemented in anthroposophy. I wonder if there's any relationship to that, you think? Or... Yeah, I'm familiar with the the anthroposophical movement and the education side of it. There are some similarities, although it doesn't necessarily uh, carry the same banner in terms of the, the the kind of the philosoph the philosophy or the. However, it worked for me. Yeah, definitely. It, I think it, it works for most humans. Me up, it opened me up to many other things like art and photography and filmmaking, which which I then followed to become a career Beautiful. for a period of my life. So tell us who Moreno is. You mentioned this name of this gentleman that came from the United States to teach psychodrama for those that don't know who he is. 
So no, Moreno uh, created the psychodrama method. Oh, okay. And and, and uh, Dita was the name of the teacher. She was a student of Moreno, and she Got was it. coming just coming back from uh, spending a few years in the West Coast of America, where she studied psychodrama. So she offered that to us. So we used, we used to do meditations and psychodrama and guided visualizations. You know, things amongst that teenagers. Been, that's that's really completely amazing. Completely blew my wow. mind. Completely. Yeah. It's blowing my mind here. That's the education of the world's future, I hope. The future I hope of the so world. Too. Yeah. Well, we're certainly doing our bit, our bit for it. Definitely. Cool. So then uh, psychodrama, like you said, is so uh, so central to representations like Bert Hellinger developed in Constellations later on. So you mentioned you went into a career in photography and in the arts, right? Yeah. And at what point in that journey, Ili, did you find the calling to switch to family constellations or how did you come across Hellinger's teacher well, teachings? First of all, the, the decision, the step towards taking therapy as my chosen career happened during a time of a very big crisis when I've been through uh, a, a major difficulty in my um, marital life of the time and the business life of the time and my everything basically uh, reached a point where uh, there was a, a total collapse and um, I reached out for help and I um, found a hypnotherapist and uh, started to work with a hypnotherapist and as we were working through basically restoring my own strength and Coming back from a very, very big uh, crash, um, I realized very early down the line, you know, very within the first or second session, that uh, I could do that. I could probably do that very well. So I started investigating and learning and attending courses. And then I got my qualification and then another qualification and started practicing. So. Mm -hmm. It's been going on and uh, evolving since. So really, my Got journey it. started. My my real therapeutic uh, journey started as a, as a way of self help, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, the way I teach it is a way that comes from the lived experience and the embodiment of me applying the things that I teach. So I do not really teach theory. I only right. teach a lived experience, and I believe that my clients and my students can feel the difference. Very the, cool. The offering theory is one thing, but offering something that you've actually viscerally been through yes. is a completely different experience. That's a whole different meaning for sure. And in hypnotherapy, was it like Ericksonian method? Was it a, any specific hypnotherapy that you started in? Yes, yeah, mostly Ericksonian. Uh, Richard Bundler, who is the co-creator of, uh, of a neuro-linguistic programming, uh, was my teacher, or so one of my teachers. Wow. Uh, and uh, his work and his influence made a big impact on the way I... I hold the session from a from a from a hypnotherapeutic point of view, uh, and then a, a list, a number of of amazing masters and teachers I've been following and been uh, fortunate enough also to assist for a number of years. So that that whole experience as a you know as a as a as a collective of experiences um, gave me something that's very very much in the flesh and bones. You know, I'm, right. I'm, I'm truly galvanized by my own working through my own traumas and my own collapse and, and standing in that place of uh, the, really it's about not offering theory. I, I really say it very clearly. I right. teach theory. I teach a lived experience and, and yeah. I think it comes across. And it's definitely a, a motto of constellation work anyways, because it's all about jumping into the field and just sort of following the whatever comes up. And yes, it as is much as you can practice exactly. and learn and study, you just yeah. got to jump in there and that's right. Practice it. Right. Yeah. Because it has so much to do with the soma, with the body and because it has so much to do with being present and because it has the theoretical side of constellation is actually quite simple you can learn it you know in a day in half a day however going deep into the 
the way that the soul is touched by the subtle movements and what we can draw by observing and witnessing a constellation, that is the, the depth of the work and that takes time and that can only be done through doing the work on oneself. So constellation is not something that one can learn theoretically. Right. And I like that because I like to get my hands dirty and I like to get involved. So, and Eli, so when you're there as a hypnotherapist practicing and helping people, how does the constellation piece come in? Take us to that part of your life journey. So this it's a, an interesting story because it was there was something a little bit restless in me with the the work of, uh, you know, uh, um, trance-driven processes. I was doing a lot of hypnosis, with doing a lot of uh, transformational work with clients, and I constantly had the feeling there is something missing. I'm, I'm, there is something in this that I feel is incomplete. And I kept looking and trying things out, and then... At one point, there was a demo by John Whittington, who, who is actually my entry point to, to the world of constellations, a wonderful, a wonderful person and a wonderful teacher from Britain. And he did a, a demo night and I went to see it and I got completely taken by the, by the method, by the depth of, of what it can actually touch and how fast it actually comes about that uh, potential for movement and for learning and, and um, shifting something in the otherwise stuck or, or difficult reality. So I asked John, when is his next training? And he said it starts uh, maybe a day later or two days later. And I said, I'm, I'm coming on it. Because it offered me that bigger perspective. You know, when we work Traditional ways of looking at therapy has a lot to do with looking at the individual and kind of looking at the symptoms or the root causes that relate to the experience of the individual. Right. But this is exactly the, the you know, that's the other side of what we are doing with systemic work, with systemic therapy, is we, we start with the individual, we start with the symptoms. These are the beacons, you know, the guidelines of... Uh, who and what are we in service? But then we go wider and wider and wider and wider into the parents, into the grandparents, into the system of the, the family system, into the culture system, into the universal system. Come yeah. sometimes, and I, I teach hypno constellation in the realm of spirit. We go into the multi universal, aspect. the many lifetimes. Much, 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 exactly, we get a much, much, much bigger image. And every time we go wider and wider in our gaze, we collect more and more information that relates to the question. So we bring all that information back so it makes sense and it becomes anchored into the here, into the now. Got so it. the intention when we work with systemically is that we go deep into the system, deep into the history of the system, if need be, but what we bring from there is in relevance to the question that relates to today, that relates to the experience of the issue holder. And that's a, a very unusual way to go about therapy. And I link therapy and self-healing or trauma healing to the spiritual awakening journey. I see them as synonymous. They are part of the same. Right. And that's the way I hold it, and that's the way I offer it. It's what our friend Emma Bragdon calls it, spiritual emergency with a Y and spiritual emergence with an E. And they're both the same sometimes, many times. Our friend John saying it has to get, get bad enough for us to make the major changes, like the Earth is going through a collective catharsis or regeneration now, right? That's right. And I truly believe that the constellation tool, or even I even call it technology because it so, looks like such a technolo technological advancement, was sort of revealed to us. It came to our conscious awareness at the right time on planet Earth for us to harness it and be able to heal through it. Since it, one of the things I really love about it, it doesn't require conversion to any belief, sect, faith system doesn't require reading anything going through any rite of passage or initiation it's just a tool that's there 
and being open to it and letting the process unfold <clears throat> and trusting it, you, you'll come out the other side, right? That's right. Yeah. Exactly like that. It, it, and, it deploys aspects of ourselves that are prone and ready to make a shift or to harness resources, whether they are inner resources or outer resources, it offers us the ability to open up this channel, the channel of um, accessing resources, whether inner or outer, and the way where we see ourselves not only as individuals facing our own difficulties, but something that has a, a, a history and a starting point. So some of the issues and problems and challenges we carry, you know, you and I, individuals, right. humanity carries with it at the level of the individual, has its origin somewhere in the family system, whether it's parents' generation or whether it's grandparents' generation, or maybe you want to go back even further to find out the event or the individual or the group to which a certain dynamic uh, become affected. We're looking at these dynamics. They are often traumas. Inherited so traumas, traumas, right? National traumas, personal traumas, political, geopolitical situations, conflicts, etc. They make an imprint on those who were part of that reality, of that time, that culture. And with the epigenetic component of our genome, so the the imprints that a traumatic event created on those who lived at the time, their offspring, so their sons and daughters and future generations, will carry inside each and every cell of their bodies the epigenetic component which holds within it the energy, the, the encoding of the trauma. So you have people of, you know, let's talk about uh, the Holocaust, for example, World War II. Future generations for Holocaust survivors, second, third, fourth generations now, this is what's emerging. They show symptoms that relate to experiences that took place in the life of their ancestors. Right. Years ago, plus, minus. So we know that epigenetic was discovered about 20 years ago, 20 plus, more or less. But with constellations, we, we always know it, that there is the, the imprints and the way that they show up in the here and now, the, the origins of what is now showing could be at any point within the past seven generations plus. Right. And so, so the ability to attend to it today, to actually repair what the imprint of that experience was, is part of the strength of systemic and family constellation. And, and I think what's incredible is that the people that will show up with an inherited trauma that they don't even know they have, they'll, they'll be thinking that they have this issue that belongs to them, that it's related to them. And then when through the work they discovered it belongs to a grandfather, a grandparent, upon addressing it for, and, and resolving it, it even on a it, it reverb, reverberates to the ancestor field and it heals the ancestor as well on some level, right? <clears throat> yes, it goes backwards in the bloodline. So it goes towards the healing is, is sent and offered to the an ancestral field and it goes into the future, into the future generations because it is up to the person in the here and now to say, stop, the trauma with me would heal and that is the best service that we can offer our children, our children's children and looking forward into the generations because nice. what we do is we attend to the transgenerational transference of trauma which is what epigenetic discoveries of the genome research are actually reinforced. It shows us that the, the trauma is embedded at the physiological level, at the biological level. So we know how to map it, so how to diagnose it with a constellation, and we know how to offer the healing process, the intervention, therapeutically, so we can heal it. 
Beautiful. We have a few people here that are watching us live. Feel free to ask any questions you have of Illy now. I wanted to ask you, Illy, since you teach a lot of students uh, from all over the world about the, the work of hypno constellations, systemic constellations, are you seeing any specific trends that are coming up for the students, any specific issues you're seeing more often lately? Anything interesting like that that you wish to share? Yes, definitely. I created the Hypno Constellations uh, quite a few years ago and been teaching it since. However, during the pandemic, there was no possibility to be in the shared space. So right. facilitators of constellations were now pushed to offer the work that they offer in, a, in this environment, in, the, in a, the online environment. And suddenly, being able to do a piece of constellation work that has no losslessness you know you don't miss anything from the experience right because it is a full body experience and you are able to do it online became something quite attractive because suddenly you can offer constellations in a way that is just as powerful that creates a, a, a visceral and physiological movement and you sense and you embody each and every aspect of the constellation by representing in the particular way that we do it with hypno constellations. So I saw a, an, an incredible shift over the past two and a half years since the pandemic started. And this is where it became truly international because then facilitators came from all over the world and started offering. Uh, and the method is so simple. You can learn it, you know, within the course, the first course. Right. And you start, people who are practicing start offering it straight away with great yeah. results. In fact, I was I attended a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago, the Worldwide Systemic Constellation Conference, which was hosted by a group in Australia. And it was incredible to see people from all different time zones all yeah. over the planet giving constellation theory, practice, workshops and experiences online and us being matched in small breakout rooms with people from all over the world whom we had never met before and actually doing therapeutic constellation work. And time and time again, I was able to confirm to myself how this field is like almost like witchcraft because it's incredibly powerful. Every time things that came up for me in the comfort of my own home in New York, would resonate for a woman in India about her father and about my father. It, it was incredible. So, and it's not anything that I have special or that she has special. It's just being open to it. Such a democratic tool in that way as well. Yeah, I think I think uh, us all as humanity, we are getting in in touch and in deeper and closer contact with our consciousness and our non physical self. And I I believe that this this is really setting the scene for any aspect of therapeutic work, self-help work that get in touch with the field, you know, with, with the knowing field, with the field of information, with the energetic charge, you know, the, 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 the non-physical presence of us and the non-physical presence of our issues and our, our uh, challenges, because the issues and the challenges are things that has... Right certain charge around them you know they have, they also have this presence within the field that you can connect with and therefore influence therapeutically so create an intervention without the need for physical contact because yeah. it's done it it's done it at the non physical field and the non right. realm. And so these sort of um, ways of working and offering help uh, therapeutic help are the tools of the future. These these are the the way that the ways that uh, therapy is evolving. This is what how humanity is evolving. So yeah. Is yeah, and uh, for those of us that are familiar with spiritism, the idea that you're describing now is very similar to thought forms. When we are in a fixed idea pattern for a long time, we're literally feeding vitality and energy and life into a thought form that has a particular charge. And in a constellation, you can actually choose a representative to drop into that field of that thought form. So you can actually see it play out before your own eyes and understand its benefits to you or its disadvantages to you 
and work through it. That's we have a couple of very interesting questions here. John asks, would, would you think that this therapy would help heal a person with a hoarding addiction? Yeah, the essence of all addictions is quite synonymous. Yeah, we know that uh, predominantly addictions is a missing figure in early life from the near family system, so from the immediate family system. And uh, that sort of addiction, with, with, with regards to any addiction really, is uh, a, a wish to fill a certain hole a certain wound and the way that one goes about it can be very, very painful. So addiction in a way is a way to uh, use even more pain to heal something that is a, a missing or a longing that relates to early life and a missing person from the family unit. So this is a general comment. Of course, I, I, I we need to look at a case by case right. basis, but there is a thread that we can see goes through uh, when we look at a, in a, a situation of addiction. Yes. Yeah. Especially so the answer some, to the question is yes. Yes. It's just something also that I learned that I found very interesting during this uh, event, this worldwide constellation event that met, like, like you said, each case is unique and there's exception to every rule, but generally speaking, it has been found that in cases where there's been a secret in the family, which is very grave, like a murder or some type of big um, betrayal. And that has been an unspoken topic and it's been carried through a couple of generations. It could manifest in a future generation as symptoms of schizophrenia because of yes. the entanglement of the Schizoph field of schizophrenia. Schizophrenia has uh, from a, from a systemic perspective, schizophrenia is an identification with a victim and a perpetrator at the same time. So when, a, when there is a, a, a case that resembles or something that um, is the diagnosed uh, schizophrenia, we look, one of the things we look for are victims and perpetrator realities. So events, situations, uh, dynamics within the family that had victims and perpetrators. And then we look at the individual asking the question, the issue holder, as we call the client in this work, and we look at the way that they may be entangled with both because it represents an inner split and it's, a, it's a, a, an inner conflict between what was an external victims and perpetrators and now is something that exists internally in the life of the client. The, the, the way I, I offer this work and the way I hold my sessions is that each and every representative that brought that is brought into the process, so let's say you bring a mother, a father, a brother, they are representing the mother, the father, and the brother, but they are also representing parts of self because we hold our mother internally. We hold right. our father internally. We hold our brothers and sisters internally. We hold our entire bloodline internally as parts of self. So this is really a meeting, an encounter that we create with every constellation, not only of the people and representatives of them, but also representing parts of the individual's own personality. Right. Beautiful. One more, more, more questions and stay tuned because right here in this session, uh, Ili is going to do a demo of a hypno constellation. So we will be guided through it. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Mark asks this question. Is there any specific initiatives to introduce or advance hypno constellations within the mental, mental health care provider community? And he asked specifically in the United States or international associations that a therapist or psychologist could benefit. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about the U.S. I know that in places like Brazil, for example, there is a lot of uh, trust in the systemic and family constellation work, and it's been introduced into some of the major institutions like family court yep. and disputes between or just in supporting separation of parents and, and working with children. So 
the, the work has so much to offer in the way of um, support, uh, mental health and uh, therapeutic processes that people in great need can benefit from. Whether it is taken on board by the establishments in the rest of the world, particularly in the U.S., this is, you know, this, there's still a journey to be done. With. Yeah. However, uh, where it, it where, where it has been taken on board, we see that it works uh, with a with a wonderful results, and it's just becoming stronger and stronger and bigger and bigger. So, definitely. Yes. It's still, you know, there's still the early days for constellations. Bert Hellinger really started that in the beginning of the 1990s. So it's one of the newest, you know, one of the latest forms of, of modern therapy. Yeah. And it's still, it's still in its infancy. So there's a lot to look forward to. Definitely. Uh, and, okay, I guess we can go into the practical part of our conversation, Ili, if you'd like, unless there's any other things you'd like to share that you thought we didn't cover uh, or any other insights you'd like to share before we actually go into the Hypno Constellation demo? Uh, yeah, I can just say a couple of words about uh, Hypno and Constellation. So what, what I do with this work is uh, we start with uh, a relaxation process. So it's a, an, an induction of a, a light trance. And what we do in that trance is we quiet the mind and enable the issue holder, the client, to create an inner space, an inner space within their own consciousness. And into that inner space, we invite representatives, so aspects of the family system or other system that we are looking at. You know, we can also look at relationship with regards to projects or uh, how people uh, behave in their professional life doing organizational work with systemic principles. So it's not only about individuals and working with individual trauma or challenges. So into that inner space, there will be representatives standing in, showing up. Some people see them, other people just sense a certain presence. And we work with something called immersion. So I do the consciousness immerse itself in the individual representatives and has a, an experience that comes from seeing through the eyes of someone else, hearing through the ears of someone else. And that's the power of representing. So standing in the place of another person and developing a new relationship with the challenge or with the mother or with the father or with the inner child or with death. I mean, I think you saw my my uh, presentation about working with death. And what this work taught me is that death is actually a major resource for us in the world of the living. And it was a very powerful session. Yeah. So I think the demo today will be actually something to do with uh, working with death and looking at death uh, as a as a resource. Yeah. So looking at death as a resource is what yeah we're going making to go death into. a resource for us. Making death a resource for us. Wow, yeah. that's very powerful. So and that gonna... is you know that is your death, your death, my death. Uh, whoever is listening now, it's the point of of your death, the final. Uh, the final point in your existence in this physical body is something that we can actually draw a lot of knowledge and guidance from. So that's the little journey I'm going to take you through. Perfect. I'm going to okay. put you in full screen then, and we will get into this moment, and I'll be back with you shortly here. Okay. So let's take a moment and... Uh, See if you can focus on a challenge, something that is a, a difficulty for you right now. And maybe you want to close your eyes, allow yourself to sink in a little bit further into your seat so you are comfortably and securely held by your seat. Maybe press a little bit against the backrest so you have this being held feeling and then with your eyes closed just pay attention to what seemed to be 
a longing or a challenge right now, something that you face that is uncomfortable. And with your eyes closed, you can also bring your attention to your breath now. Just notice the movement of air in and out. Noticing how your body can relax now. Bring your attention and direct your breath to the base of your tongue. That's the place where your tongue meets your throat. Breathe into the base of your tongue deeply. And allow the out breath to release any tension, any stress. Anything that doesn't serve your journey, your present moment, can dissolve and make its way out as you breathe out. And again, just breathe again to the base of your tongue. Allow that part of your body to relax, to send a message across the entire body to fully relax and let go of any tension, any stress. And the out can allow in the release of what's not serving you and your journey right now. And as you listen to my voice, I'm going to invite you to open an inner space, an inner space into which we can invite representatives and resources and create an encounter. Constellation is an encounter uh, of parts of you, parts of self, part of family system and other systems that you may be part of. So in a moment, I will invite you to bring yourself to the point which is the end of this life in this body. We're looking at uh, transporting us now, you now, into a point in the future. A point in which you have lived your life, accomplished what you've accomplished, and reached the point where you're just about to take the final breath. And just before this moment, now you can scan your life from the point of conception. And conception takes you through the evolution in utero. And in utero, you grow and evolve inside the womb. And in a moment, you're going to be taken through the birth canal and go through the moment of your own birth. Allow the birth to happen. You're still scanning your life from birth. You are now a young baby in your early life. And you evolve and grow into a toddler and evolve and grow into a young child. You see yourself maybe in your first days in school and evolving further into your adolescence and becoming a young adult and beginning to age and bring yourself all the way back to the point in which you are now about to take your final breath. And if you ask yourself this one question just before you are about to transcend and end life in this body, ask yourself this question now. What could I have done less in this life to bring me here in a more stable, calm, accomplished manner. What could I have done less? And just allow yourself to receive the answer. Good. And you can also ask, what could I have done more? 
in this life that are now about to end. And again, you pay attention and wait for the answer. Good. Now, in a moment, you're going to take your final breath. And as you take your final breath, you begin the transition towards the realm of the dead, the non-physical existence of you. I'm going to count from one to three. When I reach three, you'll be taking your final breath in this life and transition through outside of the physical realm. One, getting ready to transition. Two, inhaling and letting go of the final breath. And three, you are transitioning. Allow yourself to complete the transition. And as you now entering the life between life stage, see what happens if you connect to your question, connect to your challenge, the challenge that you brought with you now. What does it feel like? How relevant is your challenge, your inquiry, when you are transitioned outside of the physical realm? What do you notice when you hold your question, your inquiry? And in the stage of between life, certain entities and angels and other non-physical can become part of the experience. So pay attention and notice who is with you. I don't know who you're going to find present with you in this non-physical realm, in the phase of between lives, between incarnations, but notice who's there. And if you have a question that relates to your challenge, you can ask it now. Get the support and the advice and the guidance of your spirit helpers, spirit guides, maybe angels, whoever is there present to you, offering you what they offer you only for the highest of good. What do you get in response to your question? Good. And in a moment, a gift will be offered to you. A light gift, a non-physical gift. However, that gift can be brought back to the here, to the now and can be utilized in support of your inquiry. Allow that gift to arrive to you now. Find a place in your consciousness to store and keep and hold and use this gift as and when you need to. It was given to you so it can be used. And I don't know if it is already clear, the situations, the points, the experiences that will require you to use this gift. I simply trust that if it was offered, there is a good reason for it. And so you can bring it with you to the physical realm, to the here, to the now. But before we return, maybe take another moment, just enjoy this non-physical existence and allow yourself to bathe in the realm in between lives. Good. 
So in a moment, I'm going to count back from five to one. And when I reach one, you'll be back present in your own physical form, bringing with you any insights, guidances, gifts that you have come across, met, received in your journey. Five, four, getting ready to bring your attention back. Three, tonight, when you sleep, when you dream, you'll continue to process being guided with the insights and the messages, sensations and feelings from this experience. Two, getting ready to bring your attention back fully and open your eyes. And one, eyes open. Good. So this is, a, in a nutshell, uh, a little demo of what one of the things we do with hypnoconstellations. This particular one comes from the realm of spirit, hypnoconstellations. From the what? The realm, hypnoconstellations in the realm of spirit. That's the realm, realm of spirit. Of course, when I, where I teach working with systemic principles and with, with constellation, but not addressing physical realm issues, but issues that relate to the realm of spirit. So uh, working with spirit guides, working with ancestors, um, with um, um, looking at what happens on the soul's journey and how the soul's journey is um, something that goes runs parallel to what happens in our physical life. So the first two courses of the practitioner's course in the hypnoconstellations journey are dedicated to the, the psychological part of things, the trauma part of things, the how to work with family members or family hypnoconstellation or, or systemic hypnoconstellation. And the third course is in the realm of spirit. And this is where we work with the non-physical. So working with yeah, a whole range of resources that are from the non-physical realm. I don't know about those that were following along, but for me, this was very powerful. And I really appreciate where you where you took me and where the experience that I had. I wanted to share it with you after we, we disconnect from the broadcast. And uh, we are approaching the end of our conversation around the fire, Ilya. And I wanted to see if there's any other final words that you'd like to leave our uh, audience with. Well, just like you had an experience, I'm sure uh, others had an experience, and I'd invite, you know, if uh, somebody wants to share or email Please. me, yeah, uh, that, you know, my email address is here on the page. I'd be very, very happy to hear comments and reflections, and uh, if any one of you wants to take this further and, and learn that as a tool, something that can be added to your existing practice. I have many students who are therapists in different ways and different styles, energy workers and healers that learn constellations and hypnoconstellations in as a way to enhance and add on to their existing offering. And this is one of my specialty. I work with people who are what we call fusionists. They bring a certain method and I find a way to marry their own experience, their own initiations, their own knowledge and gifts with the principles of systemic work and the tool of constellations. That's what we do in London School of Systemic and Family Confusionists. I like that name. I resonate with that. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, yeah, I de definitely recommend if you are interested, check out London, LondonConstellations.uk. Illy's information is here in the description. Reach out to him. The beauty of uh, the technology today is that, like he mentioned and like I experienced it many times, you can have a fully sensory, incredibly vivid experience from the comfort of your own home thanks to this technology. The fields, the constellation tools, the technology works even at a remote, in remote locations like this. So I wanted to thank you very much, Ili, for uh, being this afternoon out of London there for us here in New York in the morning. Happy Jubilee, as my cousin said, for the Queen, 70th uh, amazing milestone. <laughs> and I hope to have a chance to um, see you in person one of these days in one of these events. With and pleasure, I invite, Fred. I invite all of you here to like and subscribe our channel, Spirit Reflections, and suggest future future topics and future guests that you'd like to have around the fire here. 
And so for on behalf of everyone here, I wanted to thank you again. And I'm just going to put our closing vignette and we hope to see you soon in our next episode around the fire. Thank you everybody for joining. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Eli. <laughs>